Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach and play through the Whatnot Cabinet. And I thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of the Whatnot Cabinet by Steve Finn, Beth Sobel, and Eduardo Baroff. Uh, oh, the Whatnot Cabinet is a tile placement, tile drafting game. And it's a game by Pencil First Games. They provide a lot of really nice, casual, solo gaming experiences. And so for setup, you place the main board out here, the main action board. You'll choose a color for you and one for the AI. I will be orange, the AI will be green. And you place them in this order here. AI is gonna be in the first slot, me in the second, AI third, and me in the fourth. Then you'll shuffle up the rival deck, the rival AI deck, and set this aside right here. And then you'll give yourself a cabinet here. You'll put all the tiles in the whatnot cabinet bag here, but you'll exclude any tiles that have this symbol on the back side of them. All those will be returned to the box. They're not used in the solo game. And you'll draw four of those tiles and set those here, just off to the side. This will be from where you'll draft tiles. You'll shuffle the curiosity deck here and uh, you're gonna draw five of these cards. You'll place these all face up in a row. These are the mini goals that you're gonna try and achieve during the game. Also, you're gonna shuffle these up and draw one card this will be yours. The AI does not get one. And the last thing you'll need is a variety of the point tokens. You'll set those aside. All right, and so in Whatnot Cabinet, you are going to be drafting these tiles, placing them in your cabinet, trying to achieve these goals here, as well as other goals. And the AI is basically gonna be blocking you for certain actions and removing some tiles. The AI itself will not score any points. You're, you're not scoring against the AI. You will be scoring for a threshold, there are a variety of ranks here listed here, and they all are five point intervals, the highest one being at 46 and more. Now, before I get into the rules, I, I wanna talk about scoring because scoring is the, the most important part of this game and knowing how you score points is paramount. And so the game comes with this nice little scoring guide to explain how you score in the cabinet. And you gain one point here for every row that you have three different types of objects. You gain three points here, for a row with all three of the same kind of objects. You gain two points for a column of four different colors, and you, then you gain four points for a column of all the same color. And so that's uh, one of the big ways you're gonna score a lot of points. Now you do have this wonder card here that gives you extra points at the end of the game, and this one says one point for every bottle. And so there will be bottle type objects that'll show up in the tiles here. There are none here currently. Each of the types are shown at the top here in the little icon. So we have the plants, animals, and the shells here. And there's other types as well, crystals and bottles. The other way you score points is choosing an action. So these actions here at the top have a number printed on them, three, two, and one, and you'll get points for choosing that action. The reason for that is those actions give you less control over what you get because these are blind draws here, and I'll, I'll explain these actions in a minute, but the harder it is to predict what you're gonna get as tiles, the more points you get for choosing that action. So you can earn points that way, and you earn those with these point tokens here. Another way to earn points is placing tiles with a crown, and so at the end of the game, you'll count up all your crowns, and that'll count as points. And then you'll have these cards here. If you earn these cards while you play, you'll gain the points listed in the top left here, and each of these cards has a different uh, a goal on it, and so I'll explain these here. This one here is a different object type in each row. So if you have four different objects in, in the four rows, you can claim this. This one is one row of each of three different and three same objects. That's pretty self-explanatory. Fill the corners, so have four items in the corners. This one here is five of the same color anywhere. And this last one here is same object type, different colors in a row. And so these are the ones that I will be trying to go for as I play the game. Now, some of these will get removed as we go, but I'll explain that in the round overview. All right, so in the game, when you play, you're gonna start on the left here and whoever has a pawn here is gonna go and then you work your way across. I'll tell you what the AI does in just a moment, but let's talk about these actions here. So the game consists of three rounds where you're gonna take two actions per round, gaining a total of four tiles each round, and two tiles per action. 
So when you take an action, you're gonna move one of your pawns to one of these five actions here, and then you'll get to do the action. Now this one here says you're gonna draw three tiles and discard one of them face down into a discard pile. The other two will get added to your cabinet. This one here is draw two tiles, then place one face up here, and then take one from this offering here. This one here is draw one tile to the offering, and then take two tiles from the offering. This one here is draw two tiles from the bag and put them in the offering, and then draw two from the offering. And the last one here is get rid of all tiles, draw four tiles to the offering, and then choose two tiles to take from the offering. Each time you take a tile, you're gonna take them one at a time and resolve them because some of them have special effects. So there's two different tiles here that have special effects. This one here, when you take the tile, you're gonna not place it on your cabinet, it'll get set aside, but then you'll draw a tile blindly from the bag and that'll be the tile you get to place. But what you get here is you get one point at the end of the game for having this tile. So it just gets set aside and added to your total at the end. This other one here lets you do like the, the last action here, except you only take one tile. So you'll sweep away all the tiles that are currently in the offering, draw four new ones to the offering, and then choose one. So these will end up sometimes in the offering and available for you to choose. And sometimes the AI will get rid of them as well. And so as far as placing tiles, there's three things you need to know about placing tiles. First, they must go into an empty space. Second, if you take a special tile, like the ones I showed you, you must immediately use that action. And then third, once they've been placed, you can't move them. All right, so let's talk about the AI's actions here. These are really straightforward. What you're gonna do is you're gonna flip over a card and you're gonna do this action. We'll, we'll start the game right here as I explain this because when you start the game, the AI gets to go first. You start with the leftmost pawn here, and so it's the AI's pawn, the green one. You flip over the card, and it tells you what, which action it's gonna choose. So it's gonna choose the fourth action here, going to this spot right here. And then you do what it says at the bottom. So it says discard all purple objects. So in this case here, this shell gets discarded. And then after that, you set this aside, and then you draw one tile at the end of every AI's turn. So we draw one and it goes right into the display here. And we'll keep repeating those actions depending on who's in these positions here. Of course, in the first round, it's back and forth. And then at the end of rounds one and two, what you're gonna have to do is flip over two of these cards here. You will not be able to earn those cards. Now, if you've earned one, it can't be flipped over, but you do have to flip over two of them. If there's only one, you flip over one, and if there's none left, then you don't flip over any. And then you move all the pawns on the action board straight up to their columns, and that'll start the new turn order, and you'll see that in play. And so now that it's my turn, I wanna think about a few different things, like some of these goals that I wanna com complete. I definitely wanna complete this one here, it's an easy two points to get uh, three of the same kind but different color in one row. So that, that one's really good. On top of that, if you remember from the scoring card, that'll also net me a three-pointer anyways because that just requires three of the same kind in a row. So I definitely want to go for this one here. And I think I want to go for this one because getting the four corners is pretty easy. It still leaves you with a little wiggle room to do other things. And I might go for this one since I'm already doing this one. So those are the ones I'm thinking about. So I'm not going to worry about these two. Maybe I'll just let those get flipped over the first round. And so with that in mind, I see that there are two animals available. And I like that idea of, of getting the two animals. That's gonna to work towards this one here. And so I wanna look at these options here and choose one where I can draw two from the display. And this one here lets me draw two. So does this one, but he already took that one. So this one here lets me draw two. And on top of that, it's a one point action. So I will gain one point right away for taking that action. And then I draw one tile from the bag and let's see what we get. And it's another animal, which works out really well for me. And so now I get to draw two tiles from the display. And I guess it really doesn't matter which of these animals I choose. I will choose this one, and then I will choose this one. I think that's good. And I'm placing them in the corners because I'm gonna to work towards this one as well. And now that I've gone, the AI goes, and then they're gonna draw this card, and placing them in the second position. See, it says number two here. It's kind of hard to see. But there you go, it says number two. It also shows the picture just to remind you of where that position is. And it says discard all bottles. Well, there are no bottles there, 
but the AI then draws one tile to the display here, and it's a bottle. <laughs> and so now it's my turn, and it's really tempting, right, to take that animal right now, but, but neither of the two actions are gonna allow me to do that. This one won't let me take anything from the display, and this one will sweep everything away. And I don't want to because I want to gain that elephant later. So I definitely want to take this first action because it also grants me three points for taking that action. And so what that offers me is I get to draw three tiles. All right. And so these three tiles here are what I've drawn. And then I get to choose two of them to keep and one to put in a face down in the discard pile. Well, the, I, think, <laughs> I think the options are clear. I'm going to take these two here. So I will place this face down in the discard pile. I will add these two. Let's start with this one. And I think I will place it here or maybe down here. And the reason why I'm placing it here is I'm planning on getting a red elephant. And if I get the red elephant and place it in this column, and if I put all reds in this column, then I will gain four points for that at the end of the game. So I think that's really worth it. And then this one here is gonna grant me a point, but I also get to draw blindly from the bag. And so let's see what I get. All right. <laughs> oh no, we got another animal. Ooh, what's the choice to be made here? Do I just go with it and gain that, uh, gain this objective right away? On top of that, I'll get the three points for that column, but I'll lose the chance of gaining four points here. Hmm. You know what? I think I'll just go with this here. So now that I've completed this, I will gain this immediately to my scoring. So that's two points right away. And I'm also part of the way here with this one, because now I have three of the same kind here. And so I just need to complete a row with three different kinds. And I could do that here, and that might be worth it. All right, so it's the end of the round. So one of the things we have to do is flip over two of these scoring cards. Well, I, th I will flip over this one. I don't think I'm going to complete that one. And I will flip over this one, because I don't think I'll complete that one either. I think I can complete both of these on this next turn. We'll try. And so now we move all of these straight up, just like that. And so now I get to go first. And I really like this three-point uh, action here. I think that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to do the three-point action. Uh, it's, it's, you know, a little risky, but I don't know. Three points is a lot. So let's see if it's worth it. We draw three tiles again. And I have, let's see, I have this blue leaf, which is good. I could place it down here. But then I won't be working towards this. I don't know if that's going to be worth it. Hmm. It's a tough choice. I, I think right away I'm going to take both of these. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of the cat. And then, so I'm going to take these and uh, I, I need to make a decision on this. You know, I, th I think the best thing to do is this. Because I want to complete both of these at the same time. And I have one more turn and I can do that. But I can't do it with this one. This one requires three different kinds of objects. And these two are the same, so I can't have them in the same row. But now these are two different kinds of objects, a shell and a plant. So I think that was the right call. Now it's the AI's turn, and they are going to do rival position number three, placing it here. And they're going to discard all animals, so that animal goes. They'll draw a new tile to the offering here, and it's another animal. All right, I think I'm going to be a little risky here, because I'm going to place this on the two spot and gain two points for that because of, of that action there. Now I get to draw two of these. And so these are the two that I drew and then I get to place uh, one of them in the offering. And so I'm not sure which one I want to place. If I take this one, I can place it right here right away, but this one has a crown on it too. And that's worth an extra point. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this one and I'll place it right here because maybe I can get three plants and, and have that score for that row. And so now I get to choose one as part of this action from the offering. And I want to choose the bottle because bottles give me an extra point at the end of the game. And on top of that, it's the third different kind in this row here. So now I finished both of these cards. See this one here requiring one in each of the corners. So I gained that one. And this one here requiring one row of three of each of the same kind. And then one row of three of each of different kinds. So that was actually a really good turn for me. Now it's the AI's turn. And they're going to go to the four spot here. They will discard all shells. We only have one shell. And then they'll draw one to this spot here. All right. So now that there are no other scoring cards here, we don't have to turn any over. So we just go on to the final round. This is the third round. It's a very quick game. And I get to go first, which is really nice. 
Now I do like the fact that I have another bottle here and this one has a crown. So that's definitely something I want to consider. This one here is another plant to go here. So both of those are really good for me. So I think one of my actions, the first one, will be to go to this space here. I will gain one point for that. And then I get to draw one tile to the offering. And it's another shell. And I get to take two from the offering. So I'll take the bottle first and I will place it here. And the reason why I'm placing it here is now I have four different colors. This scores me two points at the end of the game. And then my second one is going to be the plant, placing it here. And then I get to go again since I had both of my pawns in the first places there. And I, oh, I'm tempted on this one for the three points, but I don't know what I'm going to get. You know what? I'm going to risk it. <laughs> that three points. I love that three points. It adds up quick. So we're going to draw three tiles here. And let's see what we get. Looking for a bottle. No bottle. Okay. See, oh, <laughs> these are hard to choose from. So this one, yeah, this one's got a crown. This one's going to give me a point. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to skip this one. I'll discard this one. Maybe I shouldn't. I'll take this one. That's going to give me a point and I'll draw one tile, but I have to place this tile. And so we get this leaf. So if I place it right here, that's going to be four different colors and that'll be two points as well. And then I'll use this one here. So this one, again, you get rid of all the tiles in the offering, and then you're going to draw four tiles to the offering. And we were hoping for a bottle because the bottles score points, but these are all crowns also. So I could just take one of those as a crown. And on top of that, if I get all of the different kinds, different types in this row, I will gain uh, an extra point. So that was definitely worth it because now these are three different kinds. Now at this point here, there's no reason to play the AI's turn because the AI is just the blocking AI and we can just go on to final scoring. So the first thing that we score are the rows and columns. Again, these are the scoring requirements here for rows, three different kinds or three of the same kind and columns, four different colors or four of the same colors. Now I don't have any of them with four of the same colors, so I'm not gonna score any points there, but I do have two row, two columns with different colors, this one and this one. So that will give me a total of four points. And then for the rows here, I have three of the same kind here, three of the same kind there. So that's six points right there. And then for the different kinds, I have one each of different kind here, one each of different kind here. So that's another two points. And so that completes the rows and columns. And then we're going to gain our points from our completed cards here. So I gained a total of five points here. And then I gain the points for the bottles. Now I didn't really get that many bottles, did I? Just one, two, only two, huh? That's not that great. And then I get two points from these two tiles here. And then I also get points for crowns. So one, two, and three, and four crowns. That's not too bad. Got a lot of points here. <laughs> and then there was one final uh, scoring that I didn't mention. And that is points for your pawns where they're at. And so you do get three points if your pawn's here and one point for here or two points for here. So I get a total of four points. It's not too bad. All right, so let's check out this total here. Got a lot of points. Looks like 41. Wow, I thought I actually did better than that. <laughs> not quite, huh? But not too bad. It does put me at the second to last bracket here, the Curiosity Claimant. But I have not yet received Relic Fanatic. <laughs> And so there you go, that was the tutorial and solo playthrough of the Whatnot Cabinet. Definitely let me know in the comments below what you think of this game. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I have a link in the description. And I thank everyone who has supported me thus far. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.